I've still got a big smile on my face after news broke that Eric Ten Hag, he's going to become Manchester United's next manager. It now is a case of when and not if that announcement happens. Hopefully after Ajax lift the Dutch Cup by beating PSV on Sunday. But when Ten Hag comes to Manchester United, no United fan is under any illusion that it's some sort of magic wand. He's got such a big job on his hands. He's coming into a very, I would probably call it semi-toxic environment, not built for success. He's got to instill a lot of stuff. So what's on his to-do list? In my opinion, I'm going to run through five things I think are on his immediate to-do list because there's a lot to do at Manchester United. You can't do it all at once. What's his priorities? That's what I'm going to run through in this video. Make sure you go down there. Hit that subscribe button just at the bottom underneath the video. Boom. Hit that. Hit the notification bell as well. You get a, a notification every time I go live with a video like this. But let's talk about it, man. Let's talk about Manchester United. The number numero uno for me. It's got nothing to do with the squad. It's got nothing to do with the players. It's got everything to do with the club. He has to make sure that he brings a new structure to Manchester United. And the fact that he signed the contract, for me, tells me that will happen. If we take a look at Manchester United's hierarchy at the moment. Now, before I get into this, I'm going to do a separate video on this altogether in terms of what a hierarchy is now and what I think it needs to change to and the power structure at Manchester United. But if we run through this, run through this, if we run through this, we know that we need to get Joel Glazer's dirty mitts off every decision. We've heard that Richard Arnold is going to be the man that starts delegating. But what we can see here is the current structure. We've got Ralph Ragnick with his coaching staff. Presumably all of these are going to leave. Mike Phelan, Chris Armas, Sasha Lense, don't know how much work he's done, and Ewan Sharp, all going to leave. That means that we're going to get Eric Ten Hag coming in in this position here. You're going to see Ralph Radnick moving over, hopefully probably just underneath John Murto. He should be the man, Ralph Radnick should be the man that John Murto leans on for experience, for consultancy, to be asked questions. And Darren Fletcher just floats in a role that I still don't really understand. And here we can see Eric Ten Hag coming in, Probably Mitchell van der Gag, as we can see from the news, he wants to bring in his assistant from Ajax. That's crucial that he does that. Crucial that he brings in Mitchell van der Gag. I think that's a very, very important part of this whole process. These two together, looking at the Mitchell butters down there. <laughs> looks hilarious. But yeah, he, he needs to come in and replace Mike Phelan there. And then you can look at someone like Robin van Persie or Yap Stam or uh, René Muhlenstein and all the other ones, links to these assistant coach positions, first team coach. That's the structure that needs to change for sure. And then you go down there, Justin Cochrane and Nick Cox, well, they've done quite well. The, ideally, in my opinion, you need to get someone like uh, Paul Mitchell around about there. Matt Judge he can deal with the player negotiations. There's nothing to say. I, mean, I don't think we're going to get rid of him as well. Ideally, Paul Mitchell will come in and basically take both of those jobs, head of recruitment and director of football negotiations. As in a dream world. But that's the structure and that needs to be changed. And for me, that's first on his list because for him to operate properly, he needs the support network around him to make that happen. Second on his list, it's about player power at Manchester United. That we've had such a shift post-Fergie towards player power, everybody taking control of what they want to do in terms of players. Players just simply having a super in and hyperinflated self-importance in their heads and Manchester United allowing them to get away with it. That needs to change under Ralph Rand uh, not under Ralph Rannick, sorry, under Eric Ten Hag. He tried to, Ralph tried to change it. Now, I don't know whether this is completely true or not, but this is just the latest conversation that we're having. The idea that Ronaldo might have vetoed Conte when he came in. That's what Samuel Luckhurst is reporting from Manchester Evening News. But regardless of whether that's true or not, the fact remains that Ten Hag has to wrestle power back from the players and give it back to the club, take it back to him as a manager. He's got to be the most important. Fergie always held a, a mantra that he didn't want any player to be paid more than him because he wanted to be the man at the top. Obviously, that's changed in terms of how much money there is in the game now. I don't think Fergie would have coped with how it is now. He got out at the right time in terms of what style of manager Fergie was. But Ten Hag needs that player power to be reduced if he's going to have any chance to implement the system that he wants to implement and that's what we've got moving on to next as a next point because i tell you what these players have got no chance with their current fitness levels they've got no chance of operating properly under why am my tv trying to turn off when i'm trying to do a bit of work here ladies and gents but look fitness levels this is obviously a, a year this is right at the start of the season, but look at that. Tackles won, duels, interceptions, aerial duels, ball recovery, 20th, 20th, 18th, 18th, 15th. United 
are going to have to have the preseason of all preseasons. I'll be honest, I wish that preseason tour wasn't happening. I think that's going to slightly get in the way of his plans and his preparation. Because when you take a look, as I said, when you take a look at, at those stats and how bad Manchester United, how unfit Manchester United are, and the sort of system that Eric Ten Hag plays, he plays with that high press, the high aggression. Now, Ralph Radnick tried to bring that into Manchester United. He wasn't completely able to do it. But because he was an interim manager, he changed the system. He was like, okay, it's not going to work there. I've only got six months. Let me see what I can put in that works. He will not do that. Ten Hag will not bend or change the principles that he's built his teams on. So therefore, these players are going to have to buck up, throw up in training, and have the preseason of all seasons because they will not be able to cope. It's like when Klopp came into Liverpool, it took them a while to get used to it, but they stayed true to it. They kept going, they kept going, kept going, and they kept making the right signings, and it started to work. And that's something he's got to work on. So all of that's sort of internal. Existing. Club structure, removing, reducing player power. You can't remove it all. That's the way that the football, modern football has gone, but he has to take control of it back. That's all internal. Externally, there's one thing that majorly needs reform, and that's recruitment. If we were to take a look at a list here, right, these are all the signings that Manchester United have made. I'm just going to say whether I think it's been a bit of a success or not. Sancho, I would say a success, and it will be a success. Varane, I would say it will be a success. Cristiano Ronaldo, I still don't think it was part of Manchester United's plans. He scored goals, but he, will he be here in two years? No, he won't. So in that sense, I wouldn't say a success. We go down here. Donny van der Beek, definitely not been a success so far. Maybe that changes underneath Eric Ten Hag. Ahmad Diallo, we spent plenty on a youngster who so far has disappeared into Rangers now. Hasn't started a game in quite a long time. Alex Tellez, I wouldn't call it a success. Facunda Pellistri, could work. Cavani, success, but it was free. I think you can see the pattern here. Maguire, not a success. Fernandez, huge success. Wan Bissaka, not a success. Daniel James, not a success. You can see the pattern. Fred, I would say successful. Delo, I wouldn't say successful. I wouldn't say a massive failure. And Lee Grant, we literally paid two million for a wallpaper designer. It has to change. There has to be huge reform when it comes to our recruitment. Because if we don't allow this man to sign the players that are built for his system, that's what Liverpool have always done from Luis Diaz to Mohamed Salah to Van Dijk to Alisson. The, the players fit the system and the style of football that he was working towards. United haven't done that. Pick a mix of signings over the last few years. We need to change that completely. The reform has to truly believe in the direction that he's taken our club. It's not just about signing players for Eric Ten Hag and then in a few years' time, we're going to be left empty-handed and with a, with a very mis muddled and misbought squad. It's not what it is. It is about changing the actual focus of what Manchester United want to be as an identity for a football club. That's what this man's going to come in and do so that whoever comes in after Eric Ten Hag will follow that same pattern and style of play so that the squad he builds will then slot into the next manager. And that's going to be the, hopefully the new identity of Manchester United moving forward. And the last thing, the last thing, this list is exhaustive. It really is exhaustive. Uh, this, sorry, this list isn't exhaustive, but the, his actual full list will be exhaustive. This is just what I would consider the five priorities when he comes in. Top of his to-do list. And absolutely is, an, is a complete and utter shift of the player mentality in this squad. It's horrendous. It's truly horrendous. That game against Everton, the game against Leicester, two games where if United just put in even half ass performances, we'd probably be in with a chance of getting a top four finish. Instead, they clocked out for the season. They can't be asked working underneath a manager who won't be there in a few months' time. They'd rather just check out. Paul Pop has already checked out. He's got his head elsewhere. Probably will join Real Madrid, get a huge payday. He's got to come in and get his mentality into this squad. I saw this quote going around and I quite liked it. It's Ten Hag speaking in 2021 saying 23 games unbeaten. It's a nice streak, but it tells me nothing It's about trophies. I allow 24 hours of joy after a game, not more. After that, I want my team to be fully prepared for the next opponent. Now, there's something else that I've seen uh, and read, and it was after their 4-1 win against, was it Juventus, Real Madrid at the Bernabeu? And on the plane back, he was sitting there watching videos of Fortuna Sittard, a Dutch team who Ajax were playing at the weekend. People were like, why are you not celebrating? He was like, you can celebrate. We've got a game to play. Ajax won that game 4-0 at the weekend. 
Instead of getting sucked into the celebrations of what that might have been, he always has his focus on what's next. And we need that elite mentality to come back into the squad and to replace this mentality that's just an acceptance mentality. It's a mentality that the players are really only doing it for a job. And of course, they're only doing it for a job. But that can only take you so far. That mentality won't build a title winning team. When there's a connection that's a little bit deeper than just a paycheck they get at the end of the month, that's when you start seeing teams getting built. That's when you get title winning teams. And that's how you build dynasties. Dynasties aren't built on wages alone. Manchester United and that mentality has been torn, torn apart what Fergie built. And that's what this man is tasked with bringing back in. So if I'm being completely honest, I'm looking at the initial to-do list of him. As I said, number one is changing that hierarchy at the club, bringing in who he wants to bring in and getting rid of who shouldn't be there. Number two is changing that player power. The idea that, I don't, I don't know whether that's true about Ronaldo or not, but it's just a, an example of the concept of it. He needs to get rid of that player power and take it back at Manchester United. Number three, fixing the fitness. in Because this squad is a bunch of lazy bastards. That has, that has to be changed. There's no chance that his system's ever going to work at Manchester United. Number four, we need total reform of our transfers. Complete and utter reform. Hopefully that's going to be Paul Mitchell coming in. Why well, won't, anyway. That has to happen. And number five, switching that mentality the idea that you can have 24 hours to celebrate a win but after that you've got to get back on it and if Eric Ten Hag can as I said that's that's the initial to-do list I think I'm, I'm going to do more videos I'm going to take a look at what I would consider the overall plan that Ten Hag's going to have what's he going to do who are the dream transfers going to be how is he going to play at United there's so much Ten Hag content I've got planned here for United People's TV I've kept that Dutch energy on the wall and I'll tell you what the Dutch energy's worked Ten Hag he will become Manchester United's next manager that's going to be hopefully announced early next week and we can start planning for next season, all right? That's what I'm going to do here on United People's TV. But that, for me, is what I would say is his initial to-do list at Manchester United. When it comes to the rebuild, it starts with these five points. You let me know what you think about that in the comments below, as you always do. And make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. Drop a like on the video. Take it easy. Very 10 hard, baby. Woo!